And now we're live. Hey, welcome to God is in the House. And we are going to do some very wonderful things over the next two breaks. This break and the next break, okay? And uh, if you take a look, uh, you know, Ralph is going to kind of show some of the things that we have on the table here. So we're going to be discussing some of the aspects of communion and teaching on communion, but also Passover. And what did, Je what did Jesus, what did Jesus, and his name was Yeshua, I believe, Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And how did Yeshua talk about these things? And I want you to have the expression of that and the understanding and the revelation of it. And um, so it's an exciting thing when we can come together as God is in the house. So if you have uh, uh, communion uh, elements at, in your house, uh, if you have grape juice or uh, whatever you use for uh, for times of communion, uh, we're going to be using both uh, grape juice and Manischewitz wine. Those those that want wine will have wine, and those who want juice will have juice. And then we also have uh, 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 bread, and we have unleavened bread, and whatever bread you have, it's fine. So we're going to be teaching on that just just over the next two weeks and over the number of segments. So. You can understand what's happening um, through the seasons and the times that we're in with this COVID-19. Uh, maybe you, you've been so busy with everything that's around that, gee, I haven't had communion or I haven't been to church or um, do I have to have a priest give me communion mm -hmm. or do I have to have somebody, some pastor to do it or, you know, am I qualified? Am I qualified to have communion by myself? Well, we're going to talk about those things. <laughs> you know, it, you know, uh, uh, relationship is a wonderful thing. So God is in the house, and and um, I believe it's in Proverbs uh, chapter eighteen. So if somebody can look it up. It says, "The righteous run in, okay, to what? They run into a strong tower, and 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 it says if they run into the strong tower, uh, I should have had this, if it, somebody wants to find that." Uh, uh, in Proverbs, I believe it's 18 or somewhere in there. Uh, when the, verse our, 10. Huh? Verse 10. Verse 10. Can, have you got it? Yeah. Can you put the, can you flip that to uh, Judith? And uh, Proverbs 18. Okay. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. Okay. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Does does anybody know that song? Anybody can sing that song from kindergarten? Kindergarten? Well, I don't know. Or from Don? Do you know that one? <laughs> he, he does, but he's just being very very he's shy. He's shy. He's shy. He's shy. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, Don. But in it. The name of the Lord is strong tower, and the righteous run to it and are safe. Hmm. <clears throat> the rich man's wealth is in his strong city, and like a high wall in his own esteem. So, when, that's verse 11, but 10. Does anybody else have anything different in 10? <laughs> I gotta get my Hebrew Bible. Okay. Okay. Anybody else got anything different? So, what do you think? What do you think a strong tower is? Okay. What do you think a strong tower is? Is that fortified towers that the watchmen? Yeah. It, yeah. I, I think it's it's it's. Um, that, it's fortified, yeah. but it, but it, a strong tower. In other words, if you can see walls around it, like the watchmen, right? Watchmen on the wall who are the kind of like the, they're like the prophets and that type of thing with the shofars, and then, and it says the walls of walls are salvation. You know, like Isaiah sixty, verse, uh, you know, in Isaiah chapter sixty. <clears throat> Don't go there right yet. And it talks about how the walls are salvation and the gates are praise. So there's gates there that are praise. So 
the righteous run into the gates of praise. Oh, is that what, isn't that interesting? And, and, and it says they will be safe. So what does safe mean? What, what, if you're safe, what, how could you describe safe during this time of COVID-19? A little way from Christ. Covered. Mm -hmm. Psalm 91. Yeah. What's that? Psalm 91. Yeah. And, yeah. In the, and in the arms. And the wings. And under the wings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Refuge. In the Hebrew... It says, the name of Adonai, okay, a strong tower. And the righteous person, okay, so who's righteous? The sons of God, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so our sons and daughters of God are righteous. Um, has anybody been unrighteous? Me? Well, like, you know, we all have before yeah. we met Jesus, right? That's right. And But we, we do something, and all of a sudden we're righteous because of not a what? we've done, but the blood of Jesus that's over us. So mm -hmm. repentance brings us into a place of righteousness, brings us into a place of relationship. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So uh, it says the righteous person runs, runs to it. In other words, you have to make a choice to run to the strong tower. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. During this COVID-19, how many different places can you run to? Well, they have testing stations everywhere. Is that a strong tower? No. no. Yeah. <laughs> they have everything everywhere. Is that a strong tower? No. Okay. I like your no. It's the, the <laughs> decisive. So the righteous run to it. Okay, they run to it. They run to the gates of praise. They run to the shelter. And, and, and there's a strong tower and there's a lookout out there. And, 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 it, and it says... And it says it's raised above all danger in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Wow! So God is in the house. So when you run to it, into the righteous shall run to it, into the strong tower, it's, you are raised above all danger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you like that one? I like eh? it. Because yes. it's true. No fear. <laughs> there you go. Oh, That's it. Did you get that on tape? Gee, that, no fear. No fear. In other words, the opposite. I'm telling you, what's happening with Barb? Man? She, she's moved to a, her own strong new tower in her career. You've got your own little place, and she's just like zinga zanga down there. I'm surprised you are. <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay, so that's awesome, Barb. You nailed it. That's two, two weeks in a row. You just nailed it. So that hurts a lot. So... Adonai is the strong tower. So Adonai Elohim is the strong tower if we run into it. And the righteous, when we become, when we give our hearts to the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, it, the, the blood washes over us. Okay, so when we go into communion later on, you'll see the, the communion cups and, and you'll see the, the, the bread or the matzah. And, um, and we are to do this in remembrance of our Lord Jesus and the sacrifice that he's made. And through that sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise. That's in the Bible, right? So in the sacrifice of praise, when the righteous run into God is in the house or that strong tower, God lifts us up into the tower above all danger. Yeah. Oh, you get that? Amen. Yes. No danger. As, and as Barb said, no fear. No fear of man, but a reverent awe of God. So communion or Passover is what? A reverent awe of God. And we're, it's a form of worship. Do you, do you see that? Ah, it's a form of worship. So, so we're running in to the strong tower tonight. And I, and I pray that you guys, uh, isn't that interesting? This, this Bible, that I, I don't know if it's backwards. I don't think so. It says Messiah. Jesus, yep. Yeshua HaMashiach. You know, um, part of the teaching tonight is I'm going to probably try to uh, create some earthquakes in your foundation and your thinking. But if, you're, if your foundations and your thinkings are good and God shakes it, then it's going to, you know, it's not going to be moved. You're not going to be moved, right? But if you've been standing on something that maybe hasn't got all the understanding, well, maybe God's going to shake that and crack it and then 
uh, fix it so you're on a stronger foundation, eh? Maybe replace that that pillar that is nonsense. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I say nonsense? Mm -hmm. uh, that does has that that has no. What do you call it when it does doesn't have any um, validity? Um, it doesn't have any Without truth. Merit. What? Without merit. Without merit or whatever. So sometimes man gets in and puts things in to something based called religion that. Uh, Adonai, Adonim, uh, his voice has spoken everything, but he didn't speak that when God spoke, you know, like man spoke that in his own voice based on interpretation. And maybe it's not 100% correct. Are you okay with that? It may have some truth in it, but God wants you to get a greater foundation of truth. Is that okay? To go deeper. Go deeper. We're going to go deeper. Deep, deep, deep unto deep. So, I... I think that Proverbs 18.10 is good. So the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Um, Jehovah Roi, R-O-I, I believe, what? I believe that's Jehovah Roi, who is the strong tower. I, I, I could be, you know, uh, my memory sometimes slips a bit. But so we have Jehovah Sekenu, which is the, the Lord thy righteousness. Okay, Sekenu. Jehovah Makadesh is the Lord of sanctification. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord now is Rohi, is a, he's the shepherd. Okay, Rohi, shepherd, Lord thy shepherd. Rapha is the Lord that healeth thee. What about provision? Jehovah Jireh, okay? So Jehovah Roi, I'm just R-O-I, okay, is the strong tower that you can run into, okay? And in that, it says he'll raise you up and you shall be in no place of danger. So that means he's protecting you. He is, the, he is Jehovah the protector. What, a Jehovah Gabor, what do you think that is? Oh, yeah. you want to turn that and get okay. The the mighty. There's no need for that. I know no need of that. But Jehovah Gabor is like the mighty the the mighty warrior, right? So do you not think uh, that's a good name to know during this COVID nineteen? Say uh, Jehovah Gabor, the Lord the the warrior. You know he goes ahead of you, right? <laughs> He's, he's like the blue sky up on top, but he's also the blue sky here. So isn't that awesome to know that he is, he is a warrior? Our Father in Heaven is a warrior. Our God is a warrior. He's, he's, you know, there are so many names for our God or for our Father. It's pretty hard to write them all down. But that's how much, that's what a father is. Now, I as a father... There's so many things that I can do for my children, okay? I have many talents. So they, they, they can call me dad this or they can call me father that. But if there's ever a hammer or a saw or electric saw in my hands, they said, that's not you, dad. <laughs> you're, not, you're, you're not tool the... So, okay. I'm just saying, you're not tool the Tim... Tim, Tim the tool man Taylor. No. In other words, you can't fix this that. This is true. You know, you Very don't. True. I can cut a board three times and it's still too short. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, uh, that's not a gifting I have. So, uh, uh, I, I know there's probably a Jehovah that can fix everything. All right. Or there's a Father that that's can fix. That's what we need. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's not me. Okay. Uh, so communion. Okay, so we're going to be doing communion later on, and we're going to do some prayer. So I'm going to just, I just wanted to get the strong tower, and I wanted you to get into the places all around the world where who's ever uh, coming into this right now is to uh, start meditating on what some of this teaching is all about. Now, when I, uh, when I take this, um, can you pass me a silver goblet? Okay. So, all right, so a silver goblet. Uh, yeah, it looks nice. This was our wedding. Uh, for wedding, we had silver goblets. And, uh, but what does silver represent? So let's go to um, Psalm 12, verse 6. 
This, and, and as you see, as a silver go goblet, you know, it's made so you can pour stuff into it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. As a vessel, a silver ball. Okay, so let's just look. What do we got in Psalm 12, verse 6? Who's got that? Psalm 12, verse 6. Like silver refined in a furnace of clay, purified seven times. Wow. <clears throat> it says, okay, so does it so the words of the Lord, the words of God are flawless. Mm -hmm. And so the voice of God is flawless. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What God speaks is flawless. And it, it so it says in Psalm, uh, it, it also says pure. Mm -hmm. Okay, what have you, has anybody got anything different than pure? Well, just purified. Oh. Time. Okay. Yeah. So, your dad was a blacksmith. Yeah. Okay, just turn, turn that back to you. Okay, your dad's a blacksmith. Okay, could you just explain the difference <clears throat> of tempering and purifying and what a blacksmith has to do with whatever he has to do to stick it in the fire and then the cooling. Do you uh, okay, we'll give you the short form. <laughs> okay, okay, you got it. Okay, uh, good. Number one, you choose the steel you're going to use mm -hmm. based on what you want to do with it. Oh, if yeah. you use a high carbon steel, uh, you're going to get something so brittle that it breaks when you use it. But if you temper uh, a low carbon steel seven times, each time you heat it right till it's glowing, just the right temperature you learn from the practice to get it to the, uh, just hot enough to not destroy it, but to uh, strengthen the molecules. You plunge it into a cold bath of oil and the carbon in the oil bonds to the steel and you harden the steel, the surface of the steel. You leave a strong steel core with a hard surface that you can sharpen. And that, then you can do with that, you can make a sword out of that. But it's got a strong core and a sharp surface that can be hardened, polished. If you want to polish it, you can polish it like a mirror. That's awesome. Do you have anything to add on that? Because you're, you're a welder, uh, Murray, and you're, you work with steel and different well, things. Just that uh, it's, um, okay. with, any <coughs> type of, with any kind of iron, you can, you can make it brittle or you can make it uh, very strong just by how you cool it off. You heat it up to that, mm -hmm. uh, to that pinnacle point, and if you put any metal in, in coal in something cold to, to the faster you bring the, the temperature down the more brittle you make the metal mm -hmm. so if you heat it up and you let it cool down gently then that it gives it more temper so okay just just leave it on you just leave it on you okay so I'm going to read out of the Hebrew Bible here and and it says okay uh, I love this it says the words or the voice of Adonai are pure words. How pure is pure? It's pretty pure. Coming out of the voice of God. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Should it should it be should it should it be tempered? Should it be touched? Doesn't no, not require. okay. Not God. No. And and that's why this is so beautiful because then it says our pure words. Silver is the melting pot. Okay, silver is the melting pot set in the earth in Hebrew. So God is taking his silver, his melting pot, and setting it in the earth, Adam. Adam, Adam who is, God took his hands and blew his breath, the Ruach HaKadosh, the fire of God, the Holy Spirit of God, into the earth. And when you look at this here, the melting pot of the silver 
crucible is put into the earth. Okay? And so, <laughs> and God is, is speaking his voice of purity into Adam, into the earth. And Adam also means blood. Mm -hmm. So you'd almost think that the first Adam had everything. And how could it ever happen that he fell into sin? Interesting, eh? Because we were given a choice in the Garden of Eden. You had the tree of righteousness and you had the tree of good and evil and knowledge. But God says, okay, it is interesting that he's going to put his melting pot, his crucible into the earth and he's going to blow his breath in there. And he, how hot is his breath? How hot well, is hot? How pure is pure? It would be fire. Like... Yeah. Hebrews 12, 29, I'm an all-consuming fire. Yeah. So if you can see that fire coming out into the melting pot, and do you think the crucible melts? No. Ah, how could that happen? How could God form something that is so magnificent to hold his fire? How could that happen that he can make a crucible that can hold his fire, human beings, of the Holy Spirit? You are the melting pot of the silver of the crucible that was molded for the beginning of time. The silver, the purity in us that can hold the anointing and the breath of God. Mm. Or else we would just be heifer dust or bull chips <laughs> or wind. Does that make sense? Okay, so, but then the other thing, it says, refined and purified seven times over. So, once isn't good enough. God does the process seven times blowing his breath into this melting pot crucible into the earth so it could stand seven times the fire and the anointing to hold the glory of God. Amazing. God has made you that way. Interesting. Silver. Silver is the, is the vehicle that God has chosen it's, what, it says silver is what? The purity of his word. So having a silver goblet to put the communion or the Passover wine into, seven to, holds the glory. This, this is a receptacle that holds. Symbol, could, symbolically. Symbolically. Yeah. But what about us? Could, it, could we be symbolically from the beginning of time being prepared to hold the glory Amen. as God has been poured out and he poured himself out Amen. as an offering, a sacrifice for and us. Yeah. And, he, and he purified it seven times. Once wasn't good enough, Judith. Seven times the process. The devil has nothing against that. So that's why I had the experts over here based on the process. Because if, if, it's, if it's done incorrectly... If, if the enemy can take the process and make you, cut, like in Daniel's, like I told, talked about last week, the statue of D Daniel, the foundation was partly brittle and partly strong. If your foundation is partly brittle and partly strong, you will be crushed. You will be, I'm not going to do this goblet, but I, I, you'll be crushed under the anointing and you can't hold it because it hasn't gone through the pur purification seven times. You haven't gone through the process seven times. You go through it once, okay, I've got it, now I can go out and minister. You, you got six more times to be humbled. Mm -hmm. At least. At least. How many, how many times do you have to forgive? Seven times 70? Yeah. Hey, Dr. Don? Yeah. yeah, seven times 70. So how many times, the purification and the righteousness, how many, how many times do, do we have a thought that we have to, Oh God, forgive me. Every thought being held captive according to the obedience of Christ. Oh, I, I, I made, I, I sinned. Oh God, forgive me, forgive me. So that's what, do this in remembrance of me. So the process is a process. 
The understanding is getting that God has refined. Oh, refiner's fire in, in, Mal, in Malachi. You know, those yeah. Malachi chapter 3. It talks about a refiner's fire. How many times do you have to take the lotter scope? Scrubby dooby dooby, lotter scope, lotter scope. Scrubby dooby dooby, get the skin off this guy. Sin, sin, sin. Sin, sin, sin. I don't care what you do with your lotter scope. And but Jesus already took that. Well, I'm just saying. You can't do a scrubby dooby dooby and blue, blue cheer. And red cheer. Oh, I smell pretty good. I guess I'm all right now because I went through the process of man. Not going to pass seven times going through the crucible of what God wants to bring his beloved through. And he's doing it because he loves you. He's doing it because you love you. Because if, you, if you're not prepared, how are you going to ha handle COVID-19? You're going to be looking in all the wrong places. Yeah. Kenny Rogers has passed away, but that song, you know, Looking in the wrong places and hold them until you fold them. I don't know what the song is, but you're at the curbstone looking up. And that's no place to be. You, you need to be looking up all the time, not from the curb, curbstone looking up, based on all the difficulties. I hope you're getting a little chuckle out of this. Anyway, so the process of silver. So when you see silver, God designed silver... Oh, you're wearing a little bit of silver, you know, like gray polished silver. Like, you know, see, the, you know, the, I can see a little gray silver. Like uh, uh, certain parts of gray are silver. Yeah. So sometimes we dress up in, a, in, in, in different colors that represent things. Does that make sense? So when we're making a banner for the Jesus March, you could... Oh, by the way, um, David, uh, you've got my other Greek and... <laughs> And you also have my other Greek and Bible, uh, Hebrew Bible, which has all this in. I wish I could read that right now, but you, could you type that in based on the Hebrew and the Greek and that type of thing from the Exo Jesus? Because it really comes out well there on Hebrew. Anyway, the interpretation of it is wonderful because the colors say it all. Does that make sense? Do you understand? People who get mature sometimes have some gray and some silver up here. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many times they've gone through the refiner's fire, being matured and ready. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. It, it's just it's just part of the process. Okay, I know, I know. Okay. <clears throat> so, silver is the color of redemption. Silver is the word of God, coming out of the voice of God, the fire of God, and so silver means some things. It's just not a silver. If it, if it just looks like a silver goblet, okay, fine, that's nice. Nice silver goblet, you know, wait, you know, has a value. But you have such a value going through the fire to be able to fill it up with what needs to go in there, right? You, you've been designed as a vessel of honor. Does that make sense? Okay. So, the sword of the spirit, we're talking about a sword, the sword of the spirit and so on. Um, quickly, uh, the enemy will bring a counterfeit, and I've been teaching about counterfeits. When John the Baptist was beheaded, they wanted to make sure that his head went on a silver platter to mock God. Hmm. Do you think that was an accident? They were mocking God by doing that in regards to the voice that was crying out of the wilderness, the prophet that was speaking, this prophet that was speaking God's voice and preparing the way for Yeshua HaMashiach. So the enemy cut his head off based on some mocking women, based on a seduction, based on all those type of things, and they want to make sure that they mocked God's silver platter. Are you with me? So do not fall into the place of mocking what God has meant for good. That's all. That's all I'm saying. The enemy will do that, and you'll see those things. Okay? So does, is, is silver... Um, uh, okay. Silver has some good things in it. I, I know, I know, I know. 
Okay, so let's go. Let's go to Mark chapter. Let's go to Mark chapter twelve. We're going to do a couple of scriptures, and then we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back and and have communion or Passover together. So let's just look at. Let's just look what Jesus said here. Um, Mark chapter twelve. Or am I in the right right place here? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, Mark, Mark chapter 14, verse 12. There we go. Mm. Okay. So we're going to read, uh, if, if somebody's got this, uh, we're going to read Mark uh, chapter 14, and we're going to start on um, verse 12, and we're going uh, to bring it down to, uh, let's, let's read to about 15, uh, and then we're going to talk about it, and then we'll read it from 15 to 25. So who would like to do the first part? Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. Who's got that? Okay. Okay. Go, go ahead, Susan. I saw Susan. Okay. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, when it was customary, they killed the Passover lamb. Jesus' uh, disciples said to him, Where do you wish to go and prepare the Passover supper for you to eat? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying an earthen jar or pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. And whatever house he enters, say to the master <coughs> of the house. The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover supper with my disciples. And he will himself show you a large upper room, furnished with carpets and with dining couches properly spread and ready there prepare for us. Wow. So what's the first thing that jumps out in that, in that scripture? What jumps out in there? There's a couple of things. Any, anything? Well, I mean, first of all, they're actually checking with Jesus to see how he wants things done. Ah, okay. Where do you, you know, like in verse 12, where do you want, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? They're checking with him first. Mark 13? No. 14. Uh, 14. 14. 14, 14 verse 12. <coughs> okay. So that, I mean, that kind of jumps out just... They, yeah, so they, they they go to Jesus first to find out what how he wants things done. Okay, and that's probably something we could all do. Mm -hmm. So it, now on the first day of unleavened bread, okay. So this is a feast, right, of unleavened bread. Uh, so can you can you pick up the unleavened bread there, uh, just one piece of it, and can you just okay. So this, here is matzah or unleavened bread. You can see it, it's. It's it's got what? It's pierced. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's got stripes. And it's stripes. bruised and it's got stripes. Okay. So when we look at that, if we flip back to Isaiah, in in, in the scripture of Isaiah, I think it's uh, he says, I will be what? In Isaiah, it talks about being pierced and it talks about being bruised. Mm -hmm. I, Isaiah, is it 55 or 50, um, 53, maybe? 53, 53 maybe, yeah. 59, 59. Oh, here it is. Isaiah 53, 53. And it says in verse 4, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken and smitten by God and affected and afflicted, pardon me, and he was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities and chastisement for our peace was put on upon him. And, his, and it says, by his stripes we are healed. We all, we are like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So, you can read through that, and it says in verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, okay? And he opened out his mouth, and, and he was like a, he, he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. 
and was and as a sheep before the shears is silent and he and he and he opened not his mouth and he and was not taken from prison or out of judgment pardon me he was taken from prison he was taken from prison okay so when you read through that um, uh, this out of the old testament is talking about the unleavened bread it's talking about being pierced you can see the piercing in it and you can see the bruising from the fire okay it's bruised and you'll see the stripes you can see the stripes uh, I think it's in uh, sec second Peter that talks about the same thing if you flip to second Peter chapter 2 it, it brings uh, it brings that script those scriptures together second Peter chapter 2 um, it talks about I have been... anybody got it? Which, which verse or do you have? Um, two. Pardon me. Two. Second Peter two what? Well, it talks. About, I I am I I have been by his stripes we are healed. Which verse did that be? Uh, well, you don't know yet. Yeah, I I generally. Have I got the right one? I don't know. Anyway, by his stripes I am healed, right? So again, here from Isaiah, and uh, it talks about, okay, yeah. by his stripes I'm healed. You got it? No. Is it first, or is it uh, first Peter chapter 2? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. There it is. I, I'm sorry. It's first Peter chapter 2, verse 24. And it says, yeah. "He who himself bore our sins in his own body on the on the tree, and we having, and 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 that uh, on the tree that we having died to sins might live in righteousness for, for whose stripes we have been healed. So, for whose stripes we've been healed. So we're going to be praying in regards for healing for people, but but it's through the stripes of what Jesus has uh, has bore for us through the iniquity and the sin. Does that make sense?" Okay. All right. So going back to, to Luke chapter 14, the other thing that pops out, it says you'll find a, a Luke man. Or, Luke or Mark? Uh, Mark, I'm sorry. We're going to go to Luke in a minute. Mark. But Mark 14, verse 14, he says, you'll find a man carrying a pot. What's weird about that? <laughs> yeah, women only carry the pots. <laughs> so uh, it would be very easy for them to find a man carrying a pot because that never... That just doesn't happen, right? In their yeah. day. In their day. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously, mm -hmm. he didn't he he didn't have uh, he didn't have a wife or didn't have uh, children or grandchildren to carry the pot, right? So uh, he was carrying the pot. So follow him, and you know, there will be a prepared room. So God has a prepared room for Passover, mm -hmm. just like we're going to have here. So in, so not only is the room prepared. But are you preparing your hearts? Does that make sense? Are you are you getting into the place uh, of preparation for this? Uh, was Jesus or Yeshua Hamashiach was he was he prepared for this? Yes. How when was Jesus prepared for this? Before the foundations of the earth. Before the foundations of the earth. Wow. Okay. So when you when you go a little further in verse sixteen it says, so his disciples went out and came into the city and found just as he. As he had said to them that they prepared the Passover. In the evening he came with the twelve. Now as, as they sat and ate, Jesus said, Assuredly I say to you, one of you who eats with me is going to betray me. And in other words, he knows that, uh, that there's going to be what? The devil is going to en enter uh, Judas, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to betray. So... Jesus is saying, okay, there's going to be betrayal here. Now, did that stop them from having communion? No. So if you've got the devil sitting beside you, is that going to stop you from having communion? <laughs> no. Or Passover? No. You, you got it. You got it. It, it, it. it has no effect on the blood of the Lamb. In fact, he, he, may, want to, he may want to partake, but he's not going to partake. Do you understand? 
he, he may want to mock you, but he, he's going to do everything he can to get as close as he can to stop you or to turn you or whatever it may be not to have Passover or communion. Make sense? Or do people take communion unworthy? Do they take Passover unworthingly? Yes. The devil likes to make you feel like you're inadequate and unworthy. Okay. So those people who, who have sin or who have unforgiveness or take those things and take communion, what does it say about those people in the Word of God? You're condemning yourself. Well, they, they, they become weak and fall asleep. Yeah. Do you think the church today is becoming weak and falling asleep right. because they're not taking this seriously mm-hmm. in regards to forgiveness and the power of the blood or, uh, or, 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 or their... Um, <clears throat> Do you think spiritual aids could damage the blood of Jesus? No. No, but spiritual aids can blood of uh, the blood may damage you mm-hmm. into your thinking and everything else. So you got to maybe get rid of that and not allow that type of thinking or whatever that type of issue is is creating difficulty in your life. Anyway, so uh, in verse twenty, it says he answered and said to them, "It is one of the twelve who dips in with me." And it says, "The Son of Man indeed goes." just as it is written to him. But okay. woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be, have been better for that man if he had never been born. Oh, okay. Then verse 22, it says, before we go to verse 22, flip over to Luke, Luke chapter 22, verse 14. I hope I got this right. I'm going by memory. Uh, or is it Luke 24? Luke 14, 22. Uh, I think it's Luke 22. Uh, okay. okay. All right, here we go, 14. Now, j- just get, get this now. Okay. Luke 22, verse 14. When the hour had come, he sat down with his 12 disciples with him. And he said to them, Now, with fervent desire, what have you got in your Bible? In verse 15. What was what was Yeshua saying here? What was what was going through? What, what, what was happening in Yeshua? Yeah. And Jesus said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to have this Passover. I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He has been desiring this before the beginning of time, because this is the one that's going to break the curse of iniquity upon man. This is going to break the curse of first Adam. This is going to break the curse of, of bringing the blood of the sons of God back in, in, uh, in line with what it's supposed to be from the beginning of time in regards to being in relationship with the Father. Do you see that? Do you see how important, how Jesus was so excited? I am fer- You know, when he was in the garden, garden of sin, he prayed so fervently, blood came out of his, out of his being. Okay, that was that was fervent prayer, but that, that was, that's the same fervency here. So he is so excited, but he was so in depth with fervency when he was praying in, in Garden of Gethsemane that blood came out of him before it poured out of him based on the crucifixion. Crucifixion. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. So he is he is in this for us to what as as it said in Isaiah fifty three to cancel out all iniquity, to cancel out all sin. To cancel those things out for us, the beloved. Isaiah was like, what? Uh, how many years before the birth of Christ? 700? Okay. 700, 700, 750 years before the birth of Christ. Isaiah, Isaiah is prophetically getting this before 750 years later, 780 years later. Oh! How, do you th- how excited do you think Isaiah was when he was saying that? Do you think he was shaking? Absolutely. Do you think Jesus was shaking in, in, in the power of who he was in Yeshua, Mashiach, based on this is it. This is the Passover. What? Before, <laughs> I'm going to eat this Passover with before I suffer. And it says, for I say to you, I will no longer eat until I'm fulfilled in the kingdom of God. You can read through that. But the excitement of that, and if you flip back to Mark right now, if you flip back to Mark, it, it, um, in verse 22, I'm going to read this. We're going to take a short break. Then we're going to have communion or Passover together. In verse 22, and he says, And as we were eating, 
Jesus took the bread, okay, this bread here, and he blessed it, and he broke it, because of how he was broken, okay, he broke the bread, okay. Were any bones broken in Jesus at the crucifixion? No. no. None. But he, but he broke the bread for us, because whatever the brokenness in us, he is going to bring healing to whatever anxiety. Whatever it needs to be broke, he will bring that healing. Whether it's bruised or pierced or stripes by the blood of the Lamb, when you read this, it says, Bless, He blessed it and broke it, and He says, Gave it to them and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Okay? And then He took the cup, and when He had given thanks, He gave it to them, and they all drank from it, and He said, This is the, the blood of the new covenant, the new wine, which is shed for money. The new covenant. The new wine. For many. Yes. For many. Okay, so when we take it out of the silver goblets down there, um, we're going to take a break, and uh, we're going to videotape it for you. You can see based on the new wine. Because you can't pour what? Old wine into new wine. Yeah, new <clears throat> wine into the old wine skin. Right? So, Don, you know, like you're like 24 now, because, you know, like you, you, we, we, your age has gone from where it was. We halved it and halved it again. So now you're 24, so God's going to pour this new wine into you so that you don't burst, right? right. Oh, good. Okay, so take a short break. We're back in five, and we're going to have communion, and we're going to pray. But we're going to show you, if you can flip, flip to this goblet down here. I just want to show this. I just... I just want you to see. I'm just going to slip right in here. When you, when you look at all the carving of the silver, we talked about the silver, and you can see the cup here. And we're going to fill this cup with wine, and we're going to pour it out as Jesus was poured out. And you're going to see you're going to see down these these troughs here how the blood is poured out from Jesus from the cross. Does, uh, like as far as the imagery of it, okay? He was poured out for us, and he and, and he and he pours it into another cup, the same cup of silver that's been refined seven times. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. we, we've been like we're we're being prepared for this time. We we're being prepared to come against any COVID nineteen. Doesn't matter what it is, we can come against it in the power of who we are. But seven times in the, in the uh, in, as a crucible. So everything is, is measured out perfectly when you see, when, when I fill this to the top, when I fill this to the top here with the wine, and when I pour it in, everything will be distributed perfectly to the other, how many cups? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many? Seven. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah, nine. So, uh, nine fruits of the Spirit. Okay. 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 So, the, the wine okay. being poured out. You see the drops at the bottom here mm -hmm. on the foundation? When you look at the drops of the foundation here, as it's been honed and cut out by the silvers, I got this in Israel, you'll find that there will be a drop on every one of these, mm -hmm. uh, of these, uh, um, just stays there. Yeah. of these tracks where, if you can picture Jesus on the cross and the blood coming from the crown of thorns or if it's coming from, <laughs> from his hands or, or from the spear when he was thrust with the spear, or all the place, places where he was punched and he wasn't recognized, the blood poured everywhere, and it poured into all the cups around the world here, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see it's called Nog, N-O-G. One drop of Jesus' blood is enough to bring salvation for everybody forever. Mm -hmm. One drop. But this is that's but he poured out all his blood for us. Does that make sense? Because when he thrust the spear in, that's why the centurion who was his job was to was to kill people. And he says, This surely must be the yeah. Son of God, because how can he be dead already? Mm -hmm. And because it was already separated, the blood and the water. Mm -hmm. So when you see this, get prepared. I, I just pray that through the Holy Spirit you'll see the new wine being poured out, and then we're gonna partake together. So bless you back in five minutes. Okay. Interesting.